Welcome to JavaScript tutorial number two, basics and variables. In this video, we'll be covering the basics, such as where we can place our JavaScript and how we structure our code. Then we'll also look at variables, what they are and how we use them. Then we'll finally see how we can use arithmetic with our variables. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. First, let's look at the basics so we can get our hands on the language. JavaScript is a programming language. Like most programming languages, instructions are given to the computer and executed in sequence, one after the other. To use JavaScript, we place it in our web pages using the script tag. You may have heard or seen this tag used before. Well, JavaScript is what it's for. There is one simple exception which we'll cover in the next video. We can place the script tag inside either the head or the body of the HTML in our web page. Alternatively, you can store JavaScript code in a separate file or on another website and load it into our web page. An important thing to remember is that JavaScript is a client side executed code. This means that our web page will send the raw code to the viewer's web browser, then the code is executed inside their browser to change the web page for the viewer. Okay, let's try out our first bit of JavaScript. We're going to build a base HTML5 template that we'll continue to build on over the course of this series. To get some immediate feedback from our JavaScript code, we're going to use this line of code called an alert. This is a function recognized by JavaScript that completes a pop-up action. Our web page is going to start out quite boring, but it will become much more interesting, I promise. Okay, so we come across to an empty folder or wherever we're gonna be writing our JavaScript, and we're gonna create a new text document Let's call it popup dot html. All right, so once we've created our file, we can right click and open it up in our editor. So I'm going to use Notepad++. All right, so first thing we want to do is specify our doc type. I'm going to use html. All right. Now we'll specify our HTML page uh, template. So HTML, uh, we'll just do a body, scroll down, close our body, and close our HTML. All right, so now we've got a basic template for our HTML page. Let's put in some JavaScript. So we're going to use the script tag, and then we're going to do an alert alert, open uh, parentheses, and inside the parentheses we can put a some words we want to pronounce, so we're going to put up some quotes, and inside the quotation marks let's put hello, close quotes, close parentheses, and then we put a semicolon on the end. This tells it this is the end of the line of code. Alright, now we want to close our script tag, so slash script, and we've written our first bit of JavaScript, so we can save this. So we can control S or file save. Once it's saved, we can open it up in our web browser. So I'll open this up and we get a pop-up that says hello. Cool. So our JavaScript is working and we made a pop-up that says hello. Now that we know how to get set up and have a line of code running, let's start learning the concepts and start building our JavaScript knowledge. Variables are a critical concept of all programming languages. They allow us to store data and use it later in our code. JavaScript makes it really easy to create and manage variables. We can create a variable using the var keyword. Var is a special word recognized by JavaScript that you intend to create a variable with a certain name. In the example here, we create a variable with the name x. In the second line, we create the variable y and we set the value inside it to be the number 10. Then, in the third line, we create a variable z and set it to a string of the text hello. In JavaScript, text is surrounded with quotation marks or apostrophes, as you may remember from our alert box. We use the equal sign in JavaScript to set the value of a variable on the left hand side. Keep in mind that the names we give to a variable must be unique if we want to store separate values. They must begin with a letter. Or, well, they can start with a dollar sign or an underscore, but I suggest trying to avoid this to save headaches later on. Let's create some variables in our practice web page. We'll create two variables and store our favorite number and our name. Then we'll make them pop up with our alert line of code by placing our variables inside the brackets. 
All right, so let's come back over again and we'll edit our document. And we're going to create a variable, so var, and we'll call our variable name. And we're going to make it equal in quotes. And I'll put my name, so it drops, and put a semicolon on the end to tell JavaScript we've finished this line of code. And we'll go down to the next line, we'll do var again, and we'll call this number for our favorite number. That's going to equal. And I'll do 17 and we'll put a semicolon on the end to let JavaScript know we're finished with this line of code. Now we're going to create our alerts. So we'll do an alert, open brackets, and then we can put our variables straight into here. So let's put our name and on the end, we're going to put our semicolon. And then in the next one, we're going to alert the number, which is our favorite number. And that's our code written. So we created two variables, a variable called name, which has uh, draps stored inside it. And we have a second variable called number, which has the number 17 in it. So we can save this. We can open it up in our web browser by dragging it in or by double clicking it. And we get the pop-up draps. We hit OK. And we get another pop-up saying 17, which is our number that we put in. Awesome. So we were successfully storing the number 17 and our name. Cool. Now that we can use variables, we can start to perform some arithmetic. We can place arithmetic on the right hand side of the equals sign. In this example, we have a variable x and we are setting its value to be the result of 10 plus 5, just like you would in a calculator. JavaScript allows us to add, subtract, multiply, divide, and use brackets. There's also a few more, such as power and modulus. One thing to keep in mind is bod mass just like math from school. The order in which arithmetic is calculated by the computer is brackets first, then orders, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. All right, let's try it out. Okay, so if we come back to our code here, we've got, we'll remove our var name and we'll just keep our number. And let's store 10 plus five. So we're going to store the result of 10 plus 5, and then let's uh, alert out our number so we can see what it is. And then we can modify what's inside our variable number without having to specify var again. So we can just say number, because JavaScript knows what uh, number is. It's a variable that we created. Let's make it equal 10 minus 5. And we'll put a semicolon on the end, and then we'll alert that result out, so alert number, so whatever the result that was stored inside number. And let's do one more for good measure, we'll do number equals number, so whatever is currently stored in number, times 10, and we'll put a semicolon on the end. So what do you think that's going to equal? Uh, let's alert that out and put in number again and uh, colon semicolon on the end. Oop, I missed a semicolon up here. Make sure I've got that in there. Cool. So we've got our f f uh, six lines of code here. So we create a variable number, uh, save 10 plus 5 to it. So we'll assume that that'll be 15. And then we have our number again and we save 10 minus 5. So we'll assume that's 5. And then on a third, we're getting whatever's currently stored in number, timesing it by 10 and saving the result in number. Cool, so let's save this and give it a shot and see what we get. So we can put that into our web browser. We get 15, so 10 plus 5 is 15, yep. We get 10 minus 5 is 5. And we get our final one is 50. Because 5 was stored inside number, and we times five by 10 and save that inside number. Cool. So that's all working. Our arithmetic uh, did exactly what we expected. This concludes our look at variables in JavaScript. Don't fear if you struggle to grasp everything. We'll definitely be using variables for the rest of this series and slowly building on the basics we learned here. So you'll get plenty of opportunity to get familiar with them. Next, we'll be learning about input and output. This is getting data into our script from a web page and back out again.
If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer it as best as possible. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.